Hi everybody, I am Kendra Adachi. Welcome to another episode of The Lazy Genius Kitchen. So I am in Florence, Alabama at All the Best Records and Refreshments. They have coffee and uh, like vinyl. It's pretty rad. Also rad because you're not gonna see this at all, but I have to point this out. Can we just talk about my shoes just for a hot minute? I'm just really obsessed with them and I wanted you to see them. So the reason I'm here in Florence, Alabama is to meet with a friend of mine who if you have been following me for any amount of time, you are gonna be so excited for me about this. Like all caps excited for me. I'm all caps excited for me. Let's go meet him. Say what if we reincarnate and whatever God said, it's your turn for choosing. Ladies, I don't wanna be without you. Hi, my name is Andy Baxter. Hi, I'm Sarah Baxter. And we are here live in our kitchen, which is in Florence, Alabama. And we moved here to do our job a few years ago. And my job is a music band person. I'm exactly 50% of one called Penny and Sparrow. I sing in that band. And um, my wife and I moved here, fell in love with the city of Florence, and so we stuck around and stayed. We bought this house and uh, got a construction loan from the bank to completely renovate it. And uh, we got three months left to do that. And um, as you can see, this kitchen has been fully renovated and we love it, but we don't use it because every moment of every day is spent either working our jobs that pay the bills or finishing the renovation projects. The first thing to go when we're in busy seasons like this is meal planning and cooking our own food. We eat a lot of fast food. I need help figuring out how to plan easy meals that we can eat that's going to nourish us and give us energy to finish out the renovations. We got three months left. Like, we gotta finish out this season strong. So that's the biggest thing we need help with. So we're looking at you. Kendra, please show up on the scene, save our literal culinary lives. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome to my office. <laughs> Happy to be here. We have already had phase one of this conversation. One of the things that we discovered is that we need we need this to be as simple as possible. Yeah. And as automated as possible mm -hmm. without being too repetitive. Yes. Yes. Is this correct? Yes. Okay. You've nailed it. Okay. Well, I could eat the same thing every single day for the rest of my life ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. Sarah mm -hmm. could not do this thing. No. I can tell by her face that she, that is no. not her. <laughs> That's not her life. We landed loosely on maybe trying to find a three-week rotation yeah. of repetition here. Yes. Um, I would like to offer one sort of decide once for how you go about this. And then I'm going to introduce everyone to the liquid index, which I've never I've never actually explained to another human before. Splendid. You so guys excited. Said the first one. Such a time is now. <laughs> so it's thrilling. Right now, you are eating out a significant amount. Yeah. Very significant. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Confirmation. Yeah. But what is uh, what can be a problem is if you try and go from zero of like, we don't eat at home really ever, uh -huh. to expecting yourselves to eat at home all the time. Sure, sure, sure. Uh -huh. That is an unrealistic expectation. Fact. So we're going to start small. I had mentioned it casually in the kitchen and you were like, oh, I like this. So now we'll say it officially on camera. What if we play in um, Monday lunch? Uh-huh through Thursday lunch. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday dinner, Monday through Thursday lunch, and then Thursday dinner through the weekend. It's like, do your thing, man. That's right. Does yeah. that sound good? That sounds lovely. I have found the recipe creation algorithm for us. You love bowl food. Yes. Fact. Right. And so this is, this is your choose your own adventure of bowl food. Mm. It's a thrilling thing. I love that for us. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with Three things. Okay. Aromatics, mm -hmm. some sort of bite-sized protein in a fat. Mm -hmm. Saute them in a pan. Mm -hmm. You can pick kind of whatever you want. The aromatics you want to saute ahead of time first okay. because if you just like put an onion in a pot of soup without doing anything to it, it's really disturbing. Sure. Uh -huh. it's just Sounds kind of terrible like, to it me. It does sound terrible. 
you did this. Like I did. Was it was thing. mainly just a question about bite-sized proteins. What's an example of a non-bite-sized protein? <laughs> like a whole piece of chicken. Like a whole chicken. Like a whole or a whole, a whole or chicken, a whole, or, or like a whole chicken breast or chicken thigh. Got it. Like you could. That's not bite size. It's no, no. Unless that's you're multiple bites. That's multiple bites. It's also quicker cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, if Word. you think about like just cut your chicken yeah. up Word. and then you can just saute it all in one thing. Okay. And now I know. Now you know. Thank you. No, you're welcome. So start with aromatics, bite size protein, and fat, and then you're gonna add bulk to that somehow. Okay. Because you probably don't want to eat just like sauteed bell peppers and chicken. Is my guess? No. That doesn't feel complete. I'd like yeah. to gussy it up a bit. <laughs> so we're gonna gussy in this direction. We're gonna add bulk. Now, there is a long list of things that you can add bulk with. Mm -hmm. Beans, potatoes. What's nice about the adding bulk is you. it's best if you can add something that's already like partially cooked. Mm -hmm. So like this is a meal prepper's dream. You just steam some things, you roast some things, and then you can just add those things mm -hmm. to that pan to give it some bulk. Gotcha. Okay. Then this is where the liquid index part comes in. Then you're going to add some liquid. Maybe you're going to add no liquid, a little liquid or a lot of liquid. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're going to add no liquid. Don't add any liquid. As I say it out loud, mm -hmm. I might should have renamed it, but it is in print now. No, so no it's, it's, it is the awesome. Liquid. This is the namesake, the liquid okay. test. And so what happens if you add no liquid, you can stop there and you have what is called a saute. Think about stir fry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's just, it's not wet. Yeah, it's no. just what it is. Okay. And then some liquid, I call a stew because I couldn't think of a better way. <laughs> you, so you're defining stew as soup less liquid. <laughs> Soup like sands a little thicker, bit of liquid. Like thicker, like a curry. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right? Dragon? And dragon. then a lot is soup. We know what that is. Too. You okay. could make it a liquindex, like all one word, oh, if you man. wanted. Man, missed opportunity. No, that sounds opportunity. like a cleaning product. Don't do that. <laughs> Here's what's really fun. Yes. It's, this is what kind of elevates this. Because I, I I think actually cooking this way, where you're like, I'm going to saute some chicken with some onions and peppers, and then I'm going to add some broccoli to it. You're like, yeah, okay. But this next part, you're going to put it in something or put it on something, or it can be eaten by itself. So let me break down what that means. So you make a saute of, let's just pick some. You make a saute of, um, of uh, lemongrass, ginger, and scallion, let's say. We'll, okay. go, we'll go Thai. Okay. You're sauteing that up with some chicken thighs that are just seasoned with salt. Nothing crazy. Nothing okay. crazy. Okay. Okay. You've sauteed them in some sort of fat. You're gonna take this saute. Oh, snap peas, that's good. We'll yeah. back it up with snap, snap peas. Now you could actually, you could put that in side fried rice. You've got leftover rice. Mm -hmm. You mix that up with fried rice and soy, you do, do your thing. You could put that in, um, you don't want to put it in a taco shell or a tortilla. You could put it in a lettuce wrap. Like mm -hmm. you could wrap it up in lettuce. Mm -hmm. You could um, mix it into uh, like a, a quiche, make some egg situation, make like a Thai frittata, mm -hmm. you know? Um, or you could put it on something. You could put it on rice. You could put it on, uh, Israeli couscous. And then after that, if you want to add some toppings, this is like, uh, adds texture, it adds uh, freshness, herbs, nuts, cheese, sauces, dressings, kind of whatever. So that's the basic of the basics of the liquid index. I want to also offer, in addition to using this and doing bowls, two sheet pan or one pan stick it all in the oven and leave it alone meals for you. Okay. 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 Have you ever made change like chicken? We have not done this. We are not friends anymore. That's not true. It's no. over. That's not true. You can't divorce us we via friendship you. because of one meal. When I die, there's going to be a chicken on my tombstone mm -hmm. because this recipe is my legacy. Mm -hmm. Here's what it is. If you have not made change like chicken, the name is the truth. It will impact change your life. So here's how it goes. Okay. Change your life. is the truth. Chicken thighs, uh -huh. bone and skin. Please eat chicken thighs. They're Great. the best cut of chicken. Great. You have chicken thighs with bone and skin. And then you get whatever vegetables you like. I would recommend potatoes, onions, maybe green beans. If you do a tender vegetable, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what to do with those. But you want something that's like pretty hearty. Carrots, you mm -hmm. know. And what you do is you put all the vegetables on a sheet pan lined with foil and parchment if you can. Because mm -hmm. it's the easiest cleanup ever. It doesn't stick. Doesn't leak, all the things. Put your vegetables on. Mm -hmm. Season, salt. And then you put the chicken on top of the vegetables. 
what happened. And then you put it, please don't run away. You put it in a 500 degree oven. So when the fire department arrives <laughs> to, to clear the rubble right. and to find us, you can say the meal that's in to. that oven it's gonna shoot is going to be life. <laughs> this is why it changes your life. Right. Because your home is in ruins. Right. So what happens is the vegetables are, you actually make them kind of close together in the pan okay. because of that high heat. But what happens is the, um, the fat from the chicken skin, it like melts off. And it flavors the vegetables. And then the skin is like really, really crispy. And it's 500 degrees for 50 minutes. 50? 50. You can't mess it up. And it makes great leftovers. It takes maybe 10 minutes because you chop what vegetables you have. If you have tender ones, like a green bean, a mushroom, tender makes me think that they're emotionally vulnerable. They are. Um, Put them under the chicken. Don't leave them out to like experience the 500 degree intensity. Just put them under the chicken. So okay. that they can kind of like almost like steam in there, but they're still going to get that chicken word, goodness. Word, word, you know word, word. But so they're protected by the thigh. They're protected. By- <laughs> they're under the sweet wing of that thigh. I'm going to make a change on a chicken t-shirt, and it's going to say "protected by the thigh." That's pretty great. That protection program. That's, That's pretty so great. Happy. And then you pull it out, and you will sing. Yes. You will sing words. You will sing just random sounds yeah. because you'll be so happy <laughs> yes. about what is in front of you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You'll sing words. Yes. So that's one. Change your chicken. And it's on my website. If you Google change your chicken, it's, it shows up. It's me. It's amazing. Okay. And then the second one is almost the exact same thing, uh-huh. but you could do it on a pan or in a skillet. Um, and it is some sort of tomato, cherry, Vine ripened, chunked up. It could actually be a can of diced tomatoes. It doesn't matter. But yeah. some sort are of. Are they tender? Were they at emotionally? The tomatoes. <laughs> same. Tomatoes are divas. There's so many. Sure. You know, finicky. They are very finicky. But some sort of tomato. Sure. White beans. Can of white beans or two. Got it. Drained. You know, mm-hmm. get all the that stuff off of them. Sure. It's really unpleasant. Uh huh. Um, and then some herbs. Like it could be dried herbs. It could be fresh herbs. Herbs de Provence, rosemary, parsley, whatever you like. Just something that's like. Skews Europe. <laughs> <laughs> that is an official uh-huh, uh-huh. description. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then sausages, like an Ital- like Italian link sausage, pork, That's like great. some sort of flavored sausage. Yeah. Sli- give it a few slices just so it kind of some of those juices can come out and it uh-huh. doesn't explode. And put that on top of the beans and tomato in the skillet. Um, you could do some like sliced thin red onion in there if you want to. Yeah. You know, kind of whatever. And then you put it in a 450 degree oven for like 20 minutes. Do you have to do anything to the skillet to prep? Or is it literally just cold skillet, cold ingredients, plop it in? And you could do that on a sheet pan. Or if you want to start on the skillet and saute some onions, you want to get some flavor from the saute action uh-huh, first uh-huh, and then uh-huh. finish it in the oven, uh-huh, you can. Uh-huh. But that is that feels like based on how y'all described how you cook. That sounds that amazing. That feels like something that, that you could do. very us. Yes. 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 So uh, when you, you said 500 degrees for how long? 50. Again, same time frame as oh, no, no. Change the Your sausage Life Chicken. 450 degrees. Yes, the sausage is a I'm little more notes. fragile. Than okay, the you're taking notes. Yeah. You've got it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For how long? 20 to, th- until it, you're like, I would like to eat that. Until the sausage is done. Until, but like I would say 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. okay so cool. I think that if you add those two one pan things to your life, they're vegetable heavy. They're, pr- they're very filling. Mm-hmm. You know, they're very, very easy. They're very simple, basic two ingredients, proteins. two different proteins, mm-hmm. ingredients that you're using in other places already. Mm-hmm. And then if you add that, use those ingredients as like, and we'll use these again for this thing yeah. and build out maybe two choose your own adventure meals per week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you do that three times. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that's very doable. So doable. You're done. Plus, you like gifted us with two entire meals and the easiest to describe recipes that we've had for any of our stuff. And look, I, I'm not a huge fan of repetition, like doing the same thing every single day, but I do love me some leftovers. Uh-huh. So I can like make this for dinner and have it for lunch the next two days mm-hmm. and be happy with that. Mm-hmm. This can be something that you guys do as like a bonding experience after we leave. Tell us more. <laughs> um, because it's kind of like, it's like decorating a room. Like, you know, like what matters the most? It's like, oh, I love coconut milk. How can I build something around coconut milk? Right. You know? So it's it's this like discovery process that's very personal. I'm not going to tell you what to put together because I don't know what you really like. But sure. that is something that you guys can kind of figure out on your own and then try it and see how, see how it goes. A couple of places you could start here is to literally cross out what you just don't even want to pay attention to. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. 
eliminate, that's essentializing as you're getting rid of what's in the way, get mm-hmm. rid of what's in the way. Um, and then um, another way that you can start is again to pick the one thing that's speaking to you the most mm-hmm. and then kind of go back to forest. But always start small with us. That was so fun to talk to Andy and Sarah about their meal plan. As a recap, here are a couple things that we did. We named what matters. You need to do that too. You have to name what matters to you before you make any decisions in your kitchen. Otherwise, you are just making decisions that don't actually impact your life in a good way and you're creating noise, okay? The other thing that we did is we essentialized, which means we got rid of stuff that was in the way. We got rid of the expectation that they are gonna cook at home every meal of the week. No, thank you. We got rid of ingredients in the Liquindex, because we're gonna call it that now. Uh, we got rid of ingredients on that that they don't like. You know, you wanna eliminate noise from your decision making. And then we also got rid of uh, them needing to create something from scratch for every meal by giving them two brainless crowd pleasers, two recipes that they don't have to think about, that they can just rotate and personalize week after week so that they can turn their brain off in this busy season. So you can do that too by following the steps in this book, The Lazy Genius Kitchen. I wish I could come to your kitchen like I did Andy and Sarah's, but since I can't, you should get this. I hope that it makes you excited and empowered in your own kitchen. We'll see you next time.